I'm going to be talking to you about the Maxxis Razor ATs. I've just had these two eyes fitted up to my 105 series Land Cruiser in the size of 285, 75, 16. And basically that's a 33 inch tire. I've run them for around about 1500 kilometers now. So this is a first impressions video. Let's face it, an off-road tire should live off-road. So of the 1,500 odd kilometres that these tyres have done, about 800 kilometres of their life has been off-road in the Australian Victorian high country. So I think I've got some really solid initial thoughts on how they perform when they're brand new in the off-road environment. Now, I do have a little bit to say about the bitumen work, and I'll get to that right now. Effectively, the first thing I noticed was that they were smooth on the bitumen and they were quiet compared to the previous muddy orientated tire that I had been running. So that was a really nice thing to have. The second thing was they seemed to improve my fuel economy. I reckon roughly about two liters per 100 kilometers improvement over running the previous mud orientated tire. So I see that as a good thing. With regards to bitumen, I also had the opportunity to drive down a winding bitumen road that was also wet. So I pushed the vehicle a little bit just to see if I could find any slip issues or points where the tire started to let go. Now I didn't notice anything in that environment. They seemed to hang on, but let's face it, you would expect that from any brand new tire on a bitumen surface. So why did I fit an all-terrain tire to a vehicle that does a lot of off-road work? There's a number of considerations. Firstly, I've got the Maxxis Razor MTs running on the Bandera and on the F250 that I own. I've also got the Maxxis Trepidors on the race car. So I've got a fairly good understanding of how the Maxxis mud tires operated. So I wanted to see how a Maxxis all-terrain tire behaved. The second consideration was that I use this vehicle as a touring vehicle. So it does a lot of bitumen work, it does some towing as well. And so I wanted a tire that was comfortable for the on-road. Now, having run an all-terrain tire on a previous vehicle, I did know that they tended to work reasonably well off-road. What I've found in the past is that when you're on rock, the all-terrain tire does perform better than a mud orientated tire. And the reason is that with an all-terrain tire, you have more rubber that can come in contact with the rock. And that's because the blocks in the tread are a lot closer together. Whereas a mud tire doesn't tend to grip rock quite as well as an all-terrain tire. That's been my experience in the past. Now with these particular tyres, I haven't had a great deal of opportunity to really try them out on rock. There's a little climb we did do, which was rocky, and they did okay in that environment. But I'd really love to put them onto some Sydney sandstone, which is a rock type that I know very well, and see how they perform. So that'll come to you in a future video, I think. One of the observations I've had with the Maxxis mud tyres is that over a period of time, the sidewalls softened up and that worked great off-road because the tyre tended to mould to the rock better than it did when it was new. And the second thing was it gave a slightly softer ride off-road. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen with the all-terrain tyre. It may do. We'll find out and let you know in a future video. For this trip, I've been running the tyres at 30 PSI. Many of the roads we've been travelling over the last week have been high speed dirt road. So up to about 80 kilometers per hour, winding sort of roads and so on. What I've found is that overall, the tires handle that environment brilliantly. They do a great job. You feel secure, the vehicle's handling, and everything works just fine. But once you get into the side of a corner where all those loose marbles are, they do tend to let go rather quickly and the back end can step out. But what I'd say to you is, can just drive appropriately, slow down, pick your lines properly, and you'll be just fine. Obviously, when you're off-road, things happen where you do need to brake 
quickly. Now, nothing like that happened to us on this trip, but just so that I could give you some feedback, a couple of times I've done an emergency braking application and I've found that the vehicle does stop extremely well. Now, keep in mind, I do have ABS on the vehicle, but in its off-road mode, the vehicle stopped really quickly and I was very happy with the way the tyres gripped the road in that emergency situation. I noticed that many off-roaders go for a mud orientated tyre as the default, and that's fair enough for mud. A mud tyre is very specifically designed for a very specific space, and that is mud driving. Now, if you're not doing a lot of mud driving, do you really need to run a mud tyre? What I've found is oftentimes the answer is no. But having said that, if you do go for an all-terrain tyre, you do find it is not nearly as good as handling those muddy situations. Now, the last week has had rain. This environment has been quite wet. So I've actually got to test these out an extreme amount in mud. So how are they handling high speed dirt roads that are a bit wet? They do okay. You definitely want to pull your speed back because Sometimes you'll come through a corner and then it might shift from gravel to clay, for example. These tyres are going to let go quite quickly if you have too much speed on. So definitely pull your speed back and just get into that safe zone if you're running this type of tyre. Over the last week, we've done some pretty decent off-road trails and they've been wet. There's been situations where we've actually got bogged and needed to winch out. What I've found is that the drive coming from these tires or the traction is quite reduced in that environment. Even when I dial a few numbers and rev the tires up to try and clear the tread blocks, they don't clear that well and we don't tend to go forward so good. So they definitely have their limitation in that muddy environment. If you're going into that muddy environment, you definitely need to be prepared for a recovery or avoid the area altogether. We got to do a whole heap of river crossings over the last week and the tyres on those slippery river rocks and round pebbles, they did the job just the way they should. And we got across every crossing without excessive wheel spin or any other problems. Being the Victorian high country, there's lots of big climbs both up and down. Some of them are shaly rock, some of them are clay. What I found was that these tyres were great in those environments. Again, they weren't the same as a mud tyre in the clay, but in the rock, this shaly loose sort of rock, they were holding their own. There was one situation where we were climbing a shaly hill that then transitioned into clay, and there was two decent ruts there. I wanted to stay out of the ruts, that were in the clay section. So we came up through the shaley rock, no problems at all. Then we got onto the clay section. I put the front tires up onto the high side of the ruts to stay out of them, but the back tires didn't have enough traction to resist the sideways movement of the vehicle. And I ended up basically crabbing up the hill until the front end slid sideways and we diffed out and failed to proceed any further. So we had to back up and have another go. My point is this, what I've noticed a couple of times is that when the tyres are required to hold a line and there's a lot of desire for the, the vehicle to slide sideways, the tyres don't hold the vehicle and you will slide sideways. So what I've started to do is modify my driving style because I understand the way the tyre behaves and I tend to look for the lowest point on a trail and just get in there at the beginning and try and hold that line. If the ruts are too deep, well then I can use other driving techniques to get around the obstacle. At the end of the day, understanding the way the tire operates is allowing me to adapt my driving to suit the terrain. So the purpose of an all-terrain tire is to give you that compromise between a full on-road and full off-road tire. So for the driver that's going to be doing a lot of on-road, maybe you're driving to work on a daily basis and you do do a lot of kilometres around town or wherever it might be, but then you want to go and hit the trails on the weekend or you want to do your family Christmas holiday up to the beach, well, a tyre like this is going to really suit you a lot more than the mud tyre. It's also going to represent far greater value to you because you're going to get more kilometres out of the tyre. 
So we had an opportunity to pull a camper trailer up a very steep climb after some rain. Now I was quite concerned that I wouldn't be able to get the job done because this camper trailer weighed around about 15 to 1800 kilos. So, and it was a clay hill. So I'm asking a lot from the, these tyres. At the end of the day, power doesn't matter in this environment. It's all about tyres having traction on the surface. Well, these tyres performed brilliantly. They got me up the hill. I did have to use both front and rear diff lock, but I wasn't wheel spinning excessively, although there was some slippage there. I was absolutely blown away by how much traction they did give me in that situation. So while I was towing the camper trailer, I did some good quality dirt roads. And one, one of the things I noticed, which was a little bit of a surprise to me, was that the Tyres tended to flick up lots of small pebbles. I could hear them hitting the camper trailer and the underside of the vehicle. I hadn't noticed that previously when I'd run a more off-road mud type tyre. And I can only put that down to the tread blocks being so close together, we're able to pick up those small pebbles and fling them out the back of the vehicle. So I'd suggest if you're going to be doing a lot of that type of driving, maybe you make sure you've got a stone guard on the front of your caravan, camper trailer or whatever it may be. I'd be really interested in finding out from those of you who have run this tyre, what sort of things we can expect to experience over the life of the tyre. Are there any concerns? Are there any positives? I'm not interested in the silly comments about, oh, they're just crap. That's not going to help anybody. Give us some constructive comments down below. In time, I'm going to do a long-term review of these tyres. So I'd like you to let me know in the comments down below, what are the things you want to know about in that long-term review? And I'll watch out for them. One of the things we often talk about with tyres is how do they handle chips and, and tread blocks breaking off and those sort of damages when we're in the off-road environment. Well, these tyres have done pretty well. There's the normal sort of nicks and scratches and dings in the tyre surface that after a, a, a 500 kilometres on the bitumen, they're going to wear out of the tyre surface in my opinion. But I did notice on this tread block here, we have lost half of a tread lug. I guess somewhere along the line it hit a, hit a bit of rock and it got cut out but I, I don't really know. But overall, I'm really happy with these tyres. They've done the job really well. I haven't had punctures. Once I learnt how the tyres handled on the dirt, I could adjust my driving style and they did the job that I needed them to do. When I did need to do recoveries, I was in serious bogging situations. Aside from that, they took me through some amazing views. We got to do some amazing four wheel driving and we got to experience the Australian Victorian high country in a fantastic way. But I look forward to giving you that long term review at around about the 10,000 kilometre mark. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.